Did you forget something? Oh, oh, it's it's you. Oh, no, 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 no. It's um, it's perfectly fine. <laughs> now, contrary to what you may believe, I don't just sit around in my home waiting for you to come by and interrupt my day. I do have, you know, other people that I see and other things that I do. But you know how much I love to be interrupted. That's why I live in a cottage in the woods by myself, because I just can't get enough of interruptions. So to what do I owe the pleasure of this interruption? I mean, visit from you. You need something. Of course you do. Never just stop by to say hi, do you? I suppose that would be another interruption, wouldn't it? All right, never mind, never mind, fine. What can I do for you today, then? Hmm. You have some valuable items, and you would like something to put them in to keep them safe. So, a box. Oh, oh, you would like an enchanted box. Well, that makes all the difference, doesn't it? I was going to say, I mean, it's okay to just sometimes need a box. It doesn't always have to be magical this and tinctures, elixirs, that. Sometimes all you need is a box. But you would like an enchanted box to take care of these valuable items of yours. Hmm? You must have picked up quite the little fortune when you were in Napoleon then, didn't you? Sure, yes, I can I can get you a box that that locks and maybe we can protect it from thieves and things like that. Now if if you want it to be more specific than that, you will have to tell me a bit about what these items are, obviously, but uh, we can we can start there at least, I guess. Okay, so they're valuable items. What, how, how, valuable how, I guess. Really, very rare. Not just rare because they're dwarven made. Something else. Valuable items that you... Hmm. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. For our interesting, mysterious traveler needs to keep their interesting, mysterious items in a very safe place. Hmm? Interesting. Well, I, yes, of course, it's something that I can do. I mean, if you don't give me exactly who you're protecting them from, or or what what you think might happen. It's going to be a bit of a shot in the dark, but I'm happy to take that shot and give you something, I suppose. Okay. Well, first of all, how how big would this box need to be? How large are these items? Okay, so not not particularly large, I guess. It's something like, um, ah, how about something like this? Would you say this is about the right size to keep your valuable items in? Okay, good. This does have a little latch on it, as you can see. Keeps it nice and tight. And if you'd like, I suppose you could have Isabel or perhaps the blacksmith, you know, add a little lock to it or something like that. But it does have a decent amount of space in there for whatever valuable items you might have. Okay. Yes, I suppose I could make you sort of a protection charm for this. Are there going to be people searching for these items, or is it just sort of 
protecting from general thieves and things like that. Specific people. Hmm. Curious. One of these days, traveler, you're going to have to actually be fully honest with me. If you are going to continue receiving my help. But for now, I suppose that will suffice. So there are going to be people searching for these items. So you'll most likely need something that is protection, as well as perhaps some elements of cloaking, do you think? Yes, okay. <laughs> yes, of course I can cloak things. I mean, not, not entirely, I suppose. It, it, again, it depends on what we're cloaking from and that sort of thing, but I could include some elements that would help to ward off things like psychic magic, you know, if someone is doing a, a locating spell or something like that, as well as something that might help uh, conceal any sort of aura or energy that these things give off. That might be rather helpful if these are rare, valuable, interesting items. Hmm. Yes, yeah, sure, I can, I can do that, no problem. It's not going to be cheap, I can tell you that. It's, uh, it's gonna have a few very rare ingredients in it, but of course, if you want these items protected, then I'm assuming that that's all right with you. Good, good. Let me, uh, yes, let me grab some things and then we'll get started, all right? All right, I think that should cover it. So because we we want this to be sort of a protection charm, but also sort of a cloaking charm, I've got a few different things here that will do both of those different things. So we'll just keep going until we're satisfied, hmm? All right. Start here, I'm going to Put a few of the more loose ingredients in here to mix together, and then we'll add the larger ingredients afterwards. But I suppose there's no time like the present. So let's get started. I thought we might start first by lighting some incense. This one here that I've chosen is one that is um, very excellent at keeping things balanced. There we go. Just sort of have that right there. There. That should smoke nicely now. Just sort of help cleanse and focus everything else that's going into this little charm of ours. Help all of the different powers to balance each other. Alright, so the first ingredient I thought we could start with is a bit of sage. 
I'm sure you know by now that sage has incredible cleansing powers. It's wonderful to help eliminate negative energy, shield from any sort of evil or negativity that might be lurking. So it's a wonderful protection. Next up, we'll add in another excellent place to start a bit of salt. Now this is salt directly from the sea to the east of Meladia. It's very coarse salt. It's one that I very much enjoy using in all sorts of different charms and tinctures and spells, whatever you'd like to call them. Salt is a wonderful place to start because not only does it also help to cleanse, but it also enhances the magical properties of other elements, and it helps to sort of ground everything together. So, sage and salt, it's a great place to start. Sea salt and sage. Right next up, another very protective herb that we could add in here to give your very important, powerful items and protection is some rosemary. Now, rosemary, the name of it, I mean, obviously it has the word rose in it, but the root of the word actually means dew of the sea. Lovely name. And this can also aid in protection and cleansing and in enhancing one's strength, both strength of character and also the strength of a spell. And then one more that sort of helps to protect, at least to start off with, is this one. I've used this in another thing for you, I think. Condensed Crescent Moonlight. Now this has several different uses. But one use of it is to help illuminate ill intentions. So anyone who may try to cross you, try to trick you, this will help you see through them. Quite useful. All right, set that aside for just a moment. Now we're going to be putting our charm into this charm. perfectly cleaned and I do always cleanse things before I use them, but just to be safe, we're also going to add in some of this incense smoke into the jar. And that in and of itself, because this incense is excellent at balancing, will help just sort of balance out the powers of everything else. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Close it up. See that smoke in there. It will just help enhance the power of everything else that's in there. Make sure everything works together as it should. All right, now the first thing we're going to add to our jar here is one of these. Mm. I think the 
this one will work nicely for our purposes. A cinnamon stick. A bit unassuming, it does more than just make hot chocolate taste yummy. Cinnamon is also a spice of protection, as well as psychic power. So again, any sort of illusionary magic or trickster magic, any sort of anything like that that someone tries to use against you, this will help protect against it. Place that in our jar. Another thing I thought might be useful is adding a bit of this in there. This is Fancy Jasper. Comes in a variety of colors, but most of it is a nice deep green. With some clear and some white and different variations of that. Jasper. It's an incredibly powerful stone, not only because it helps to ward against any sort of tricksters in your life. No one's going to be getting the jump on you. Not while this jar is around. Now, if you would really like to make a protection charm incredibly strong, it's useful to add a sigil inside. So I've got a little piece of a scroll here. I'm going to draw out a sigil that leads to protection of psychic powers of any sort of negative energy like There we are. We'll roll this up. Put that in here too. There we are. And because you wouldn't really elaborate on what you're trying to protect your items from, I thought it would be useful to add some alder tree bark. Now the alder tree has quite a few uses, very many stories in folklore and mythology. It's a tree of protection, to be sure. And it specifically helps to ward off unseen danger. That way, no matter what's coming for you, this should have your back. So we'll put in a few pieces of this, shall we? Good old alder tree bark. Next up, if we're going to add jasper, we may as well add one of the most common and helpful of gemstones as well. This is one that is known to protect, 
cleanse, to soothe, and to encourage clarity as well. Another guard against anyone who might be coming to deceive you. I mean, of course. Some lovely amethyst. Put this in your jar, too. Right, now we'll add in our other ingredients that we mixed together earlier. All right, and last but not least, just to make sure that this is as protected as it can be, we're going to coat all of this in a bit of giant squid ink. Might seem a bit of a strange ingredient. Now, as you know, squids, well, I guess you might not know, as you perhaps know, squids use their ink to conceal themselves, either from prey that they're hunting to sort of confuse them, or if they themselves are being hunted so they can make a clean getaway. And especially giant squids, they're, um, well, they're not entirely magical beings, they definitely have quite a few special abilities. And so their ink, if you know how to harvest it, is quite useful in concealing really anything. So if these items are as important as you say they are, my guess is, you don't have to confirm this, but my guess would be that they are somewhat magical in nature, which means that they may have sort of a magical aura around them. And giant squid ink is excellent at concealing powerful magical auras. Not many people know that. But then again, I'm not many people, am I? So. Just pour some of this in here. Quite a rare ingredient, giant squid ink. You're welcome. And that should do it. Make sure that cork is on there nice and tight. There you have it. Yeah. I realize it's not the most appealing looking thing. At least you don't have to drink this one, right? No, this is uh, quite powerful. You don't really need to do anything with it besides just put it into the box that you're going to be keeping all of these valuable items in. And it will protect and conceal both the items in the box and the box itself. Mm -hmm. Now, this won't actually turn the box invisible or anything like that, so if anyone just happened upon it, they would still be able to see it, you know, so, so it might still be worth putting a lock on it and, of course, keeping it somewhere safe. But if they were looking for a magical aura or something, or something, 
they wouldn't be able to sense that or anything. So it will uh, certainly keep away prying eyes, prying minds, looking for something powerful. Anyway, so I suppose that's that. There you are. Yes, of course. Oh yeah, you can you can take that box too. That's that's fine. I don't really have a need for it. Well, actually, I guess I I could find a need for it. You know, Maggie is always bugging me about keeping things more tidy around here, but everything is exactly where I know that it is. And so if I go moving around and reorganizing, then I'm going to have to take longer when I'm trying to find things. It's fine. It's my cottage, so I don't need that box. It's just fine. Anyway, um, uh, I suppose we should discuss price. <laughs> I know sometimes I've given you some things as a, uh, let's just say charity, I guess, but that is a few ingredients that are very rare, especially the giant squid ink. That is not an easy thing to harvest, let's just say that. So that one's going to run you about 10 gold. Okay. Thank you. I had a feeling you wouldn't balk at that. All right, here we are. Honestly, it's more than a fair price. Anyone else, and I would have charged them probably double. Seeing as you are such a frequent customer. Thank you. And I have to admit, as much as the vagueness is a bit irritating at times. The mystery is intriguing. Of who you are, and what you're doing in this sleepy little town of Whisperwind. Big traveler like yourself, I would have thought that you would have been quite tired of this place by now. But then again, Whisperwind is a bit more than it seems, isn't it? As are you. Aren't you? Well, that's a conversation for another day, isn't it? If you're planning on getting back to Whisperwind before night falls, which obviously is highly advised in this forest, I would uh, I would head out if I were you. Now, don't don't make it seem like I'm pushing you out the door or anything. I adore interruptions and, you know, being taken away from my actual work that I do as a healer, but, you know, it's, it's, it's in your best interest that you head out now, I suppose. Is there anything else that I can do for you today? Just that. All right. Well, I mean, I suppose if you need anything else, you always know where to find me, don't you? One way or another. Yes. All right, well. Something tells me it won't be long before you're interrupting me again. No, I don't... Don't tell anyone, but I don't entirely mind the interruptions. As long as they're not too frequent. All right, well... Like I said, you'd better head out while you still have the light. But I'll see you again whenever you need me. Bye for now. <laughs>